Commonwealth versus Knox looks at another recurring or frequently recurring story. So let's say two guys agree to rob somebody on the street. And as we've learned from robbery, this does not require a weapon. It often does involve a weapon, but it doesn't require a weapon. You could, you could simply wrestle the, the purse out of the victim's hands. And in fact, in, the, in, in agreeing to commit this, this act, uh, the two may or may not have agreed to have used force. Uh, maybe they're just planning to be pickpockets, and then one of them uh, uses force to actually wrestle the purse out of the victim's hands. The question in this case is, what are you on the hook for? Let's say that the, that the original plan was, was, to, was to commit an act of theft on the street. And, and one of the two Confederates comes armed with a knife or a gun. Is, is, the, is the person who is unaware that his Confederate has a knife or a gun that he employs during the course of, of, the, of, the, of the taking, is, is the, the unaware person automatically tagged with guilty of his Confederate's useful weapon. Well, under an old doctrine that was, that was widely prominent prior to the model penal code, there was a doctrine called natural and foreseeable consequences. If, if this was just the kind of crime uh, that would involve a weapon like that, or, or if you could imagine that a person would bring a weapon to a crime like this, if that was somehow in the contemplation of a person who thought about these kinds of crimes, then, then you were guilty of, of the underlying crime, um, of, the, of, your, of your Confederate's decision to bring a weapon or a knife. If, if that was something you could even imagine a person doing uh, for this type of crime. But with the model penal code, as you see in this case, and it's a rather short case, but it says that the, under the model penal code version of complicity liability, which Pennsylvania has adopted, that you are only guilty if you share your Confederates mens rea with regard to the knife. So if the statute says, you know, if you, if you intentionally take money from a person while aware that you have a weapon, or if you, in, if you intentionally take money from a person while intentionally brandishing the weapon, then in order for your, in order for your co-defendant to be guilty of the armed robbery component of that crime, of the use of the weapon, your Confederate has to have whatever the mens rea is required of you. So if you have to know you have the weapon, if you have to intend to use the weapon, then in order to be guilty of, of the, the weapon part of the crime, your Confederate has to have that same level of culpability that same degree of mens rea. It can't be, well, we both agreed to a theft and everyone knows that it's theoretically possible that someone might bring a weapon to a theft. That would have been enough under the old common law notion of natural and probable consequences. You agree to commit a crime, you, you assist in the commission of a crime, everything your Confederate does that is in, in any way conceivably an outgrowth of that assistance or of that agreement you're on the hook for. That's the old common law notion. The model penal code says that's too punitive. People could, you know, your Confederate could go off the reservation. This might not be what you signed on for. Now, the courts aren't precluding the fact that you are guilty of this and that you have signed on for it. You simply have to show that under all the circumstances, that you either were aware uh, that, that the person had the weapon, whatever the degree of culpability for, for the weapon is, you have to share. So let's say two of you walk into a bank um, and, uh, and you're gonna rob it. You don't know that your co-defendant has a weapon. Could, could a jury still find that, that your defendant was aware that you had a weapon? Sure, it's entirely circumstantial but they have to find that the level of culpability that's required for the statute 
to hold you guilty of the armed part of the robbery, to hold, to hold your Confederate guilty of the armed part of the robbery, that you, as the Confederate without the weapon, also shares. So you, if, if, if knowledge is required for the one guy, it's also required for the guy who helps him or signs on to assist in the crime. That's the Knox case. And that is the model penal code version of, of the, the consequences of joining or being a part of a criminal act that you have to share the criminal liability or the criminal culpability of your Confederate. It's not in, imputed that, you, that anything that he does, you are on the hook for unless you, you have the same degree of culpability with regard to, to that particular part of the crime.